It's a complex case, a 52-year-old man who carries a diagnosis of multiple sclerosis. And yes, he does have extraordinary atrophy and signal throughout the colossal and the colossal septal interface. As you go off to the side, you can see some areas of right angle demyelination. But he presents now with episodes of falling down. And while it's true, you can get extensive atrophy. We see that in the cingulate sulcus and supermarginal sulcus going up. You wouldn't get this severity posterior fossa atrophy from MS alone. I mean, look at the size of his pons. It is extremely small. His cerebellar vermis with the individual vermian lobes are also small. You can see the prominence of the patient's primary fissure right here, the posterolateral fissure. Then we go down to the medulla. We see the medullary clava as a landmark and then go to the pons and the midbrain. And of the two, the pons looks a bit smaller than the midbrain, but one of the differential diagnostic considerations here would be progressive supranuclear palsy. And you look at the inferior colliculus, you see it's got a pretty good bump, and as you go off to the side, the superior colliculus also has a pretty good bump. They're almost equal. So PSP, or progressive supranuclear palsy, which, by the way, is associated with gait disturbance and paralysis of gaze, which this patient doesn't have, wouldn't be a favored diagnosis. The severe pontine atrophy, though, in the absence of posterolateral plaque formation, which is where you would get MS in the pons, is a tip off to the diagnosis. And if we go down a little bit lower at the level of the brachium conjunctivum or superior cerebellar peduncle, it is very atrophic with this T shaped area of vertical high signal in the median pontine raphe and a cross going from side to side from medial lateral producing what's known as the hot cross bun sign of this disorder, multi-system atrophy. This patient does have atrophy and it's hard to tell what component of the atrophy is related to chronic long-standing MS and which component is related to this patient's MSA. Now MSA can be subdivided into three types. The three types are MSAC, which affects the cerebellum and the pons, also falling into the category of olivoponto cerebellar atrophy. It's one of the olivoponto cerebellar atrophies. There are heretofamilial ones as well. So it's a subset of OPC disorders. And these patients have severe ataxia and falling down as their major manifestation. The other types of multisystem atrophy are MSA, multisystem atrophy, A, which stands for autonomic failure. When they stand up, they get hypotension. Sometimes when they stand, they simply get tremors in their legs. They can't stand in one place, but they can walk, which is very different than classic Parkinson's disease, where walking is challenging due to the rigidity. So when they stand still in shy drager syndrome, which is basically the autonomic type of MSA, they have trouble staying in one place. Then you've got the Parkinsonian variation, MSAP, also known as striatonigral variant of multisystem atrophy. And this one may be very difficult to differentiate from Parkinson's disease and doesn't respond very well to the typical Cinemet and Parkinsonian preparations. These patients often have a fair amount of uh, disturbance in their speech and laryngeal paresis. Patients with MSA often have involvement of the pyramids, so there may be a combination of motor dysfunction with some of these others. This patient's pyramids look pretty good. Death is often related to bulbar dysfunction and dysphagia. And the patients often die from aspiration pneumonia or apnea. This patient manifests the hot cross bun sign seen down low at the level of the pons of MSAC with associated cerebellar atrophy, atrophy of the brachium conjunctivum or superior cerebellar peduncle, and the cerebellar and pontine atrophy conspicuous in the sagittal projection in this patient who has concomitant MS.